Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide, and I'm back at the Haunted Hogwarts Hotel, also known as Kempton Clock Tower. And wow, what a CitizenCon day two, and for that matter, the whole of CitizenCon uh, this was. But I'm going to talk right now about day two, um, a day which did not meet my expectations, mostly because it completely blew away my expectations. So let's, start, I'll handle this mostly in chronological order, um, but I'm not gonna try to be exhaustive in talking about this. It's gonna take several videos of digging into um, the details of what was said um, today. It was almost as if CIG went to the people who said, uh, I've been complaining all these years about feature creep, and said, uh, hold my beer, here comes a feature tsunami, uh, because it was a feature tsunami. They talk about so many things in their plans, and some of them quite uh, ambitious. In other words, in instead of simply talking about being able to build things in Star Citizen, they've added this whole new system of qualities and tiers of finished product qualities of raw materials, tiers of finished products. Um, and it's very exciting. I was particularly excited about the fact that because they are doing it this way, um, it handles well both types of crafting. Um, and that is that the first type of crafting is taking iron and turning it into swords. The second type of crafting is taking swords and turning them into magic swords. My own inclination is a little bit more towards the latter. But with both of them, um, for a game like Star Citizen, it can't be like a game where um, your magic sword gets you one and a half or two times or three times power. Because this is a game in which PvP is available, you have to uh, accommodate the PvP mentality. And that PvP mentality is that we're using this contest to show whether I am better than you or you are better than me. Um, and not whether the stuff that I have is better than the stuff you have. It has to be that the primary determinant of victory is still the player. Otherwise, it isn't uh, PVP, it's GVG, gear versus gear. And um, that's not as um, engaging to the PVP mindset. But that doesn't mean that, that what they said is wrong. I just, they need to make sure that they're not letting um, what you've built uh, overwhelm who you are as the determinant of victory. Um, but still, uh, everything seemed uh, very exciting. Some people are going to be thinking that this idea of 3D printing everything is, um, is, is kind of like having everything be a beam weapon. It is a, a necessary um, uh, c convenience in order to let to get to the gameplay without having to be turning individual screws and turning individual screwdrivers, which is, is impractical. Uh, then we went from um, uh, P from uh, crafting up to its larger uh, cousin, uh, something that I'm particularly interested in because of my professional background, and that is the base building. And um, uh, once again, uh, the base building looked good, but there was still all sorts of questions, including one of the major questions that was brought up after Todd Pappy first introduced it a year ago, and that is how do you handle what happens when you um, are offline? If I log out, does my base simply disappear? Does it change to an inactive state? Does it get locked up? If I, if someone attacks it, does it get damaged? Is it, or is it somehow invincible while I'm logged out? Um, all those are, um, um, to, it's almost like they were issues trivial to with, with the stuff we wanted to actually show us, but what they actually showed us was, was important and uh, uh, conjecture to the other thing that's going to be important about the base building is they, they did not seem to 
that I haven't, didn't realize or I haven't touched upon is that if you're building something as complex as a large industrial complex, you need to, you're not going to be doing this or you shouldn't be doing this building by building in a haphazard fashion. You need to have a way of uh, constructing a plan. Um, so when they were just dropping buildings, what I was thinking what they need to change is, and I'll get more into detail on this, is they need to change in a way where buildings can be placed uh, tentatively. It's not, not just place a building and then have it pop in, which is convenient, but if you're trying to build something as complex as an industrial complex, you need to, to place it in a tentative state um, and then be able to, to move around all the buildings in their tentative state until the, the uh, circulation between the, the things is right and, uh, and the, the power is sufficient for all those things. And then when you've got the layout so that it works, then you, you know, stamp the buildings essentially approved for construction. And then if there is the materials, then it will go ahead and uh, do, the, uh, do the construction. But the, uh, the workflow consideration of the design phase um, is not yet thought out as well as it should be. And nor did I, would I think it in their first pass at the specifications, it would be, you know, you need to be someone who has spent time um, in a design field, a physical design for persons, a software design field to, um, to understand exactly how uh, things work. I'm kind of amused to always see the, uh, uh, the term blueprint uh, be used uh, in uh, sections, in contexts where the, it is neither blue nor a print. Um, but the, the term carries along even though it isn't. Um, then came the ships and uh, the new Argo little trucks, uh, uh, the, the one that can hold four SU, is kind of the super mule. And I can see a lot of, except for the fact the mule is smaller, the, the mule fits in the same space as small buggies, whereas the, uh, the new uh, Argo CL um, takes up the space of a large buggy, but you know, a, an actual truck bed with four um, SCU on it makes a lot more sense than the Argos, um, than the mules, the Drake mules uh, uh, cargo layout. So I can see a lot of people wanting to melt their mules into the Argo uh, uh, CL. Uh, the Star uh, Lancer, from Miss, uh, as I said, boy, is that thing bulbous. I mean, it, it, it's a Miss ship. It's got that little mail slot window, but the, but the ships themselves seem very compelling. Um, the, uh, the builder uh, strikes me as, uh, a, you know, even as you know, a, someone like me who's a builder I, by nature, but doesn't see himself as being part of a large org. Uh, I can only imagine the size of an org that would, it would need to keep a pioneer uh, functioning. And I don't think I want the uh, uh, headaches of trying to manage that large an org. But so the, uh, the pioneer, not the pioneer, the Starlancer with a crew of four feels a lot more like a ship that I could regularly find three other guys to crew and go out and and help them build their uh, their empire with. Um, the Pioneer just, gosh, that impresses me. It's such a huge ship. Um, now the uh, the second, um, the, uh, what was it, the TAC, the Starfield TAC. It, I looked at it and I said, you know what that ship really reminds me of? It really reminds me of the Carrick. And, uh, in terms of its offensive capabilities, its medical bed, the fact it's got a small launch bay, uh, in fact, it can carry, you know, it's got a big enough bed for small uh, vehicles. I know the Carrick has more cargo space, but very few, but if you're not, if, you, if you're interested more in tactical application than in being a cargo hauler, I can easily see people um, taking a look at their Carrick and possibly melting it for um, 
a Star Lancer uh, tank. And then the uh, Star Lancer uh, Max, the cargo variant, um, is a very interesting cargo ship, particularly for the fact it's got uh, ready access cargo, which I was kind of surprised because that ready access cargo bay was something that I had um, fought up independently uh, for my um, uh, Genesis redesign that they would have these uh, uh, side cargo bays for doing the uh, uh, the luggage, the passenger luggage. And so that's, there's probably going to be a uh, uh, a similar use for these those things on the uh, on the Star Lancer. Uh, so it won't be quite as effective as a um, as some other medium lar large medium size uh, cargo ships because you won't just be able to put in a bunch of, of uh, big boxes. You'll have to be, your cargo bay is constrained one way, and then you've got these little cargo bays as well. But if you're trying to, to do a lot of varied cargoes in, uh, in a shipment, or just want a, a four, about a four person ship for doing uh, um, well armored cargo, it, uh, there will be people that will really prefer it over, um, over the Zoo CL or over the, um, uh, some of its other competitors in that price range um, and that size range. 240 is, uh, is an area of SCO that it, it uh, seems to be almost owning by itself. Not a lot of competition in that area. Um, and then they teased a bunch of other ships. I won't try to get into any of them. Uh, definitely it looks like the, uh, uh, from what they showed, the uh, uh, origin, uh, the Crusader ship is a multi-crew heavy heavy fighter um and the, the, the mariah in that, that that i think that's called the crusader trepid and then the uh the new mariah ship also looks like it's, it's larger than any other mariah ship it too may be in the heavy fighter category there seems to be a lot of interest in this uh category of ship um in what you might call the small multi-crew range uh such as the Star Lancers having a crew of four. They're, they're seeing, I think, a lot of interest in the small org multi-ships. Um, and all that was, was, uh, was interesting. And uh, then they got to the, uh, what was the meat and potatoes of the day, the, uh, um, the, the 1.0 uh, release. And it was like I was, in, in terms of like, where the Kickstarter was and where we currently are. The jump from where we currently are to this vision for 1.0 almost seems like a bigger step, you know. It, it, it felt like, were they, were they telling us we're really only halfway there? Because they are promising such ambitious things. Uh, they're building this whole extra structure of, uh, of the major guilds and a whole system of um, reputation and allegiances within it and its own and adding a whole major storyline. Um, I was I was surprised that they, in the planet program, they only mentioned four planets. In the today's program, they mentioned five. And, and the fifth was, again, expected to be an early planet, and it is Terra. And once they said that the major storyline had to do with the the politics between Earth and Terra, they pretty much had to have one of those um, planets actually in the game. And since Earth is probably going to be one of the last uh, planets added to the game for various technical reasons, um, they had to add Terra to the mix. So we're going to be seeing Terra. We're going to be seeing Terra before Odin, which is kind of surprising. I thought for sure Odin was going to be an early planet, and Magnus I thought would be an early planet, but. I'm not the decision maker there. That should be obvious. Um, but again, they're adding all this, you know, story and additional quests and additional quest quest givers, uh, and then this ability to build not just um, uh, ground bases, but to have these orgs building whole space stations, and then lawless systems having a competition as to which ones were. Um, 
uh, protected. So you would have um, not only org versus org uh, base attack raids, but also org versus org station raids. And, uh, extremely compelling uh, potential there uh, for user-generated uh, events. Uh, but wow, uh, there is still so much up ahead, still so much to be done. Um, I'm going to be creating content about it. Uh, I'll, there's a lot more content to be created, both in the short term and just uh, digging into each of these uh, uh, presentations today is going to be, uh, I'm probably going to have at least one um, full-size video on each. And then beyond that, um, as these get developed, there's going to be a, a, so many, so much things to talk about. So I guess I've, uh, I've got content ahead of me uh, for as long as I, uh, I'm looking for it. Uh, when you're doing a, a channel, when you're trying to create new and, and interesting content, um, you always wonder, am I going to suffer writer's block and someday wake up and say, I got a, a video to produce, but I have absolutely no idea what new to say. It doesn't look like I'm going to be having that problem with Star Citizen. Um, so uh, this is probably going to be my last uh, uh, video in this series from uh, Manchester. I am tomorrow catching the train back to London. I might make a, uh, a video uh, in London talking about what the various reactions I'm seeing to CizenCon. But then it's back to, uh, to Los Angeles and we'll see um, more typical videos from me, although I don't want to uh, completely preclude the, uh, um, I've been wanting to add more live content or live-ish content, which is what this is. Um, so we may, I may yet be wanting to add things to the, uh, the channel. Um, so um, I should have brought it with me. Uh, later tonight though, I will be getting, probably going live with a short uh, or actually, this may be what I will do after when I'm already on the train, uh, or already back in London. I still have one more task to do, and that is to make a little bit of a live thank you for all the people that uh, whose names are on my hat, and to pick from them um, who gets uh, the whole C. But uh, in addition, I'm, I've been watching the, the user count eagerly to see if we finally hit that 15,000 so I can give away the Zeus while the Zeus is still fresh in everyone's mind. And of course, uh, beyond that, the, uh, the giveaway for the Arasta. And uh, uh, there probably will be one or more um, of the Star Lancers uh, as future giveaways because uh, it's a good sized ship uh, to make part of a giveaway. Anyhow, uh, thank you to all of you for helping uh, pay for the uh, part of my cost for getting here. And actually, the channel pays for all of it. Uh, at least that's what I'm going to tell the IRS. Uh, this, I'm calling this a business trip uh, for the channel. And uh, anyhow, fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guy.